Hey, what's up? I am Steve Eckert, United States Marine and instructor of the project. And I have a very special guest here on our series of interviews with projects, graduates, spouses. I have Christina Megason. Thank you for joining us today on this show. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to hearing from your perspective. We hear all the time from, from the graduates how awesome it was because it's all this manly shit they're doing and they're having all this camaraderie and all this brute force and masculinity and all this stuff. So I'm, I'm so excited to get on these interviews with the spouses, with the wives, to hear from your perspective and hear probably more of the real truth of what was going on behind the scenes before, during, and after the project. And now, even a year later, right, Ryan? Graduated now about a year later, as we yeah. were just talking about. Mm -hmm. that, that's awesome. So let's go all the way back to the beginning. When you first were introduced to the project, when you first heard about the project, and I know it's now a year ago, so I hope you can kind of recall this a little bit. Uh, what, what was your first reaction when he either showed you a video or told you about it and Ryan's like, hey, I think I might want to do this. What, how did that whole thing come about? How did he explain it to you and what were your thoughts on it? So he was like doing like a lot, listening to a lot of podcasts and YouTube stuff about like, you know, self growth and stuff like that. So he would send me links and send me stuff. And uh, I remember clearly he sent me, a, you know, one of the things I think off uh, Instagram of you guys. And he was like, Hey, this looks pretty cool. Like, I think I want to do it. And I was like, wow, that does look pretty cool. Like, what is it, you know? And so he kind of looked more into it and um, you know, he explained it more to me. And I was like, that's awesome. It sounds great. You should do it. And then he said, you know, not everyone gets in. So you have to, you know, there's an application process. And then at the end, he kind of was like, and it's $12,000. So I was like, wow, that seems like a lot. So we talked about it and it was something he really wanted to do. And uh, he said, let me, let's do this. Let's, let me just apply. He's like, I probably won't get in like who knows like let me just apply and I was like yeah you know what it is what it is apply he actually got in and when he did we were both really excited and you know it's you can't tell someone not to do something to better themselves so I was I was definitely worried um but I just I stuck with them and I encouraged them and I just said you know the one thing I'm going to tell you is if we're going to spend this money if you quit, don't come home. Just, just don't come back home if you quit. I like it. I uh, like it. That's yeah, why he didn't I would, quit. I would, rem I would keep reminding him, like, you know, but it was, a, it was, I was joking, but at the same time, I was half serious. Like, you know, you got to put 110% to it and I don't want you to quit. Just suck or it. Or like three quarters serious or seven eighths serious. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I remember it clearly. And then, you know, he, he went from there. He was excited. And then I started getting excited the more he talked to you guys through the, you know, interview process and through the, after he got accepted, you know, all the stuff leading up to it, like we were both kind of getting excited. It was almost like I was getting ready to do it too. It was kind of weird, but um, yeah, it was great. I thought, I thought, I didn't think there was an issue really. To that, that's it. freaking awesome, especially hearing the, the amount. So, because what we encounter a lot, believe it or not, and, and it's awesome that he has such a freaking amazing supportive wife like you are, you were just like, hell yeah, I can't, I can't hold you back from doing this, even though it's expensive i can't hold you back from doing this because you you want to go and better yourself what do you think is the reason and this is my, I don't know, might be a curveball question what do you think is the reason that women when their husband comes to them and shows them something like this and explains why they feel like they need this and some some men might even need it even more than ryan like they're feeling that they're stuck in a rut they're feeling like they lost that spark they're not feeling like the man they used to be like these are the things that were told on on you know calls with men and then they go and present it to their wife and they're, they're really saying they need this for their manhood almost. They need it to become a better husband, a better father, a better entrepreneur, a better leader, learn more about their business and finances, get some business. They never had a mentor. They never had a positive male role model. And they tell all this like deep, really deep, dark stuff to their wives. And their wives are like, hell no, you're not doing it. And it's a huge, big fight. And then they come back and they tell us, you know what? I really need this, but my wife's not on board with it, so I'm not doing it. Where do you think, why do you think it is that the wives have that reaction to that, that type of thing? I think it's got to be a little bit of fear of the unknown, you know, when you're spending, you know, that's to some people, that's a huge amount of money. Some people, it's not that much amount of money. It depends on their situation, but I think it's the fear of the unknown. Like, 
what are you going to, for $12,000, like what, what are you getting for that? Just a couple of days. And I think um, what a lot of the project, like before Ryan started the project, I don't think he realized after he finished how much he would continue to get out of it. So, you know, when I told him, I said, you know, what if I told you I wanted to go to a spa for three days for $12,000, would you be okay with that? Do you know what I mean? But it's not like that. It, I don't think the, the people who are applying know how much after you guys actually put in and keep the connection going and keep the learning and like raising that level going. So I think the fear of the unknown, you know, thinking it's just a couple of days and not knowing what the outcome is going to be like, are you going to spend that money? And then your husband quits. Cause that's, you know, that's kind of not the best thing either, you know? So it's fear. Can he do it? Do you, do you think he can do it? You know, as a wife, like, okay, like we're going to spend this money. Do I think he can complete it and get something out of it? You know? So I think um, sometimes as a wife, you need to take a little risk, you know, take a little risk and just trust your partner um, financially and just, just back, back them up either, you know, him or me, whatever way it goes, you know, sometimes you just have to just go with it. And it, like I said, if it's something self-help, you know, it's not like you're going out drinking at the bars, you're actually, you know, trying to help your future. So it's hard to say no to that. Uh, that's freaking awesome. That's powerful stuff. And that's just trust is what you said. It just trust them and believe in them. And, but I, 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 I saw what you did there. You're, you're a little sneaky one because he said this, you're like, well, what would you think if I went to a three day spa? So you're already like planting the seed, like, well, if you're doing this, I'm going to do my own shit too. And I'm going to, I'm going to live it up at the spa. I, so I hope you enjoyed that spa. <laughs> yep. It was your excuse to go spend a bunch of money too. I like it. Smart. But I actually never Smart. went. I actually never went. So he owes me one. He owes me Oh, one. you tell me he owes you that shit. <laughs> then. He owes it. He owes you it. So let me ask you this. And, and this might never have been the situation. Maybe it was. We need to get into the, the personal side of it. But let's just say at that point in time, you and him were not really seeing eye to eye on things. You were struggling in your marriage. You weren't having a great relationship. You didn't have that whole trust level there. You were fighting over things. Just say at that point. And he came to you and said, I'm going to do this thing, or I wanted this thing is twelve thousand dollars. Do you think you would be a little more resistant to it if you weren't really say on good terms to him? Because that's what we get a lot too. That they're coming to us because they're having struggles in their relationships with their wives, and then they know they need to do something about it because they're really like on the verge of almost divorce, like literally. Sometimes even going through the process, and then they go to their wife, who they're about to have a divorce with, who we're like fighting with, like killing each other every day and asking for kind of permission to go do this. You think you'd have a different thought on it then and probably wouldn't go as smooth? So what I would tell the wives that like, you know, we're you know, not in a good place with their husbands is what they don't know is there is a lot of classroom time. I don't know if there's a lot, but I know there's classroom time, which I didn't know before. And I, I don't know what goes on in that classroom time, but I know that it's a lot of growth, learning um, and expression pretty much. So it's not like you're just, you know, digging in the mud and climbing, you know, mountains and all this other stuff. Like there's actual lessons being learned and breakthroughs happening that um, if the wives knew, like if I knew that prior to Ryan asking me, I would have been like, well, you know what? Maybe it's like a guy's way of, you know, almost like therapy. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, I think, like I said, a lot of this we didn't know before. So I think that maybe if the wives knew that like that were struggling their marriage before, like, hey, you know what? It could be a little bit of therapy. Maybe something's, you know, holding him back or bothering him that he can kind of talk to the guys, you know, about in the class or whatever it is. So I think that's a one key thing that I think if the wives knew before that were, you know, struggling in their marriage, you know, it's actually gonna help your marriage um, in a way that you don't even realize. Um, oh man, that is, that is awesome stuff. Like it is a, we're men. We don't even know, like, I've never been to any therapy, but I, I know a lot of men that have, and I know it took them, like, years to even say hello to the therapist, right? They just sit there. We're, yeah. we're, we're knuckle draggers. We're cavemen. That's where we were. We're, we're just savages. We don't know how to express <laughs> our feelings, and we don't know how to communicate and talk. We just grunt and growl, and that's what we do. So I, I'm thinking that that's the way that men need therapy. That's such a, a freaking awesome way to think of it from your perspective, like, and that's exactly what it is. Even when they show up, they don't know what to expect, and their guard is up. Their guard is up. They have that shield around. That's what we do. We're men. We, we have that barrier around us. It's like a, a turtle. 
with that hard outer shell, but really inside they're just soft little mushy humans. And <laughs> what we need to do is we have those breakdowns, we break them down a specifically very methodical process so that we can have the breakthroughs in the classroom time. And that's why once we get to that classroom time, it's like they've had enough. They're they're been broken down so much that they're completely vulnerable and open and they're having discoveries and aha moments. So it is a massive form of a type of therapy. I don't want to say we're therapists because we are no, far yeah. from therapists. <laughs> but I think, you know, like I said, a lot of the the women that we, or people, even the, the, you know, the candidates, they don't even realize like there's classroom time and, you know, stuff like that going on. So I think if there is an issue in the marriage or something, I, I do think that the classroom time, it, even if they don't talk about something specifically between your marriage, if they talk about something in the past that's holding them back from making your marriage better, whatever it is, mm -hmm. um, you know, that that will come out in the project and then it makes them a better man to be married to. Yeah, 100%. And, and we do get to a, a deep, deep level, both in their personal lives, professional lives, in business, but yeah, even in the past and childhood, we go real deep. And the only way to get that deep with a man is to just beat the hell out of him first. That's really the only way to do it. That's all, <laughs> that's all we respond to. We don't know any better. That's like just the way we it's are. True. It's true. That's awesome that you, you said as like a form of therapy, 100% is. So then also then, then from this other perspective, because I'm, I'm loving the way that you're, you're look, looking at this, let's say you were in that same uh, kind of clashing heads uh, as, as the spouse and you're really not having a great relationship at the time and you're really struggling in your relationship and in your marriage. And he went without telling you and signed up for this thing, $12,000. Because really, most of the men, their, their wives hate them at the point that they're signing up. So they go to talk to them, right? And the wife's like, hell no, you're not going to a boot camp. You're crazy if you do that. I'm leaving you or something. Because they're already on bad terms. So they can't even bring it up to them. What if he went and just did it and signed up for it and came to you after he signed up and said, you know what? I signed up for this men's personal development program because I know we're struggling. And I'm going to do this and wait till you see the man that I'm going to come back as, as a better husband, a better father, a better leader to our family, a better communicator. And I'm going to come back learning how to talk to you, learning how to, how to think a little bit differently, learning how to approach our life so that we can live the way we've always wanted to live. And I could be the man that you deserve and always wanted. Would you, what, what, what would your reaction be to that? If you were already pissed at him and he's telling you that, but this is why he did it after he already spent the money without even letting you know. Yeah. Well, uh, it, it actually depends on my mood, I guess. Um, Oh, you women in your moods. Oh, come I on. know, I know. <laughs> um, I mean, at first, I think, you know, every person, even if, oh, you know, your wife came to you and said, I spent this much money into this, you know, you'd be a little discouraged. But I think at, after the explanation, and I, I just, again, I think that, you know, the candidates should educate their spouses on that it's not just like a, a mud rucksack thing. It's not like a, you know, rolling in the mud thing. I think to really sit them down and, you know, read through the paperwork and what they, you know, I know you can't say exactly what they're going to expect because they don't know, but mm -hmm. kind of, you know, on social media now you can read a lot of you guys that you post a lot of stuff that's being done and why. Um, I think educating them, I mean, would I still be kind of upset, pissed? Yeah, probably. But if it's to better the family, I just, again, I just don't, um, I, I just don't know why anyone would, but besides the fact is like, my thought is like, you can't tell a man, you know, what to do, especially with his own money. I know it might affect your family in, in the long run, but like financially, but actually it's going to affect your family even better. And it just spills over if you just invest in yourself, you know, and maybe there's something for your wife to do for herself that can kind of, you can both do. I mean, I don't think there's anything for women out there. When he first told me about it, I was like, oh, do they have this for girls? And he's like, no. But um, like, maybe there's something out there for women to do, you know, to help them out in their own way. I don't know. But uh, again, like, I don't think you can tell a man what to do, especially with his money. And I think like, if you are on the verge of getting a divorce, you know, just try this last thing and see if it 100%. works. What, what is it going to hurt if it's already going down the tubes, you know? Exactly. Nice. Good, good way of putting it. I appreciate you taking all those different perspectives and different role playing of the different scenarios. I know those are some tough questions, but that's awesome. So now let's go back to your specific situation. When he came to you, told you about this, the, the pillars of the project are the family, fitness, finances, and faith. Faith meaning more on self-confidence and belief in yourself, belief in your abilities to 
reach your goals in those other family fitness and finances. So out of those, in what areas do you think that he, from your perspective, where did you see that he needed the most growth or leveling up or was really struggling the most in from your perspective that you were like, yeah, this is going to help you in this area? I don't know what area specifically. Uh, I do know with my husband, um, he's a quiet guy. He doesn't usually say much, even if he has something to say, he will hold back. So he, he's really smart. Um, he's a lot smarter than he thinks he is, but he's really smart. So um, I think people take advantage of him because he's quiet and he doesn't speak up for himself. Um, mm. And he kind of lets people roll all over him a little bit. And um, I don't know what category that would fall in, but he needed at, he needed something to light a fire under him and get, this might, I don't know if this is gonna sound, I don't know the right word, but get aggressive, get like, get more confidence um, because- That's the word there, confidence. Yeah, com get more confidence, I, I, I guess, yeah. Um, he needed something because as, as a child, he never had anyone push him to do anything. Like, so if mm -hmm. he wanted to, you know, if he was playing baseball, he wanted to quit, his parents would be like, okay, you know, or, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it is. So he never had someone that was like, no, you're finishing the season. You're gonna, you know, he never had that. So I thought for him, like, this is gonna be awesome. Like, if anything, it's gonna push him to show him how strong he is mentally and physically and hopefully that will bring him back confidence. I didn't realize it was going to bring back a whole new person almost, um, you know, new and improved person um, in facets of all those areas that you spoke about, I mean, have gone to like a level 10. And I have to say, they've pretty much been that level. He continues to self-improve. I mean, you know, it's not overnight, like, it's not the 75 hours you're just going to be a different person and stay that way. You know, you have to continue to grow. And um, for me, he he's definitely um, made more time. So we have, you know, since he came back from the project, we've had date night every week. Um, we made that a priority because we have a two, we had a two year old and a one year old when he went in. So um, we made it a priority to make time for us and it, it went so well. We have baby number three on the way. So there's that. So he, so he, he needed, <laughs> let me rewind a second. Hold on. <laughs> so you thought he needed to be, I think you said the word aggressive and a little tougher maybe. And that would all fall into faith for hundred percent. The confidence, he just needed more of a, a, a manly savage type man that he was capable of being of. And that also falls into courage. Courage would also fall into the faith category also. Faith, faith. we're not talking about necessary religion. We're talking about faith in yourself, self-confidence, not letting people push you around, not letting people take advantage of you. So you saw that he needed that. And they say he's kind of quiet. And, and I'll tell you what, he's not, not quiet anymore. I, he was in Vegas. He was just a wild man. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, fine. But what, I want to now go back to this. So when he went there, what was the age of your, your children when he went to the project? Um, my son was two and my daughter was like three months. So he went for four days or even more because the day before did like travel time. Mm -hmm. uh, so close to a, a, a week with a two-year-old and a four-month-old, three-month-old. How mm -hmm. did you possibly survive? And you're still here to tell a story about it when you had to do that all by yourself as a, <laughs> a, a, a poor, weak woman. That's what, because this is what the men, they give their excuses for that. Oh, I have a two-year-old that runs around like crazy. I can't come to the project. Or my, I have a newborn. I can't come to the project. Or my wife is pregnant. I can't come to the project. Or how did you manage that? Yeah. Um, it was, uh, you know what I did? He wanted this so bad for himself and I wanted it for him too. And I just, I sucked it up. I just sucked it up. And I just said, you know what? It won't be that bad. I'll just try and make the best of it. Even though, you know, I was like, flipping out on the kids sometimes, but I made the best of it. And it, it, you know, if you want someone to be a better person for you and your family, then, you know, they're going to make, they're going to sacrifice going and getting, you know, who knows what's going to happen to them. Cause you really don't know, you know, mm -hmm. you class zero zero four, you didn't really know, yeah. um, you know, and sacrificing their body and like, who knows what else for your family to try and be a better person than, I can sacrifice a couple of days, you know, for my family, for my husband, um, 
to do that. And it, you know, it's not, it wasn't easy, but you know, I, I did it just like it, the project isn't easy, but you do it and you just get through it and you suck it up. So I guess that's what I did. I don't know. Just suck it up and sacrifice. <laughs> I like it. it. I like it. Awesome stuff. You're freaking awesome. So <laughs> since he's been back, he's now been back a year. What was some of the immediate uh, changes that you saw like when he first came home right away? Cause some, some, some of the things he can implement right away, like date night, he could do that right away. So what were some of the immediate changes? And now we're a year later. Has is that still there? Is that fire still lit? Or because, you know, people go to a motivational seminar and they're all rah, rah, rah. They're hugging and high five and people and, and jumping up and down and screaming and shouting. And they go home back to their boring, miserable lives afterwards. And it doesn't have any lasting effect. So, well, obviously he did come back the, the manly man you were looking for because we have now baby number three on the way. So <laughs> we're all good here. But what was some of the immediate changes that you saw when he came home? And now what was the lasting effect now that you have a year? I, years so that's like a lot of data and information coming from you mm -hmm. so i just re i remember getting him off the airport and he looked like hell like, i was like oh my god what happened to you um but you know what he was so excited to just tell me you know all that i missed uh, mm -hmm. or as much as he could tell me because i know some of the stuff he can't talk about but so as much as he could tell me so but uh just to tell you the truth, like, you know, once he kind of ate some food and got some sleep, it's going to sound stupid, but just the way he walks, the way he speaks, um, the confidence he has. Um, I, I noticed that, you know, his big thing when he came home was trim the fat. So, you know, some of the relationships he had with people that were, I don't, I don't want to say using him, but, um, not treating him like, you know, a friend should, mm -hmm. he, you know, put no effort into those and just let them, you know, very nicely dissipate. You know, they just go away when right. you're not letting someone stand all over you or just, you know, not mm -hmm. going with the flow, you know, actually speaking up. And then the relationships he had that were good ones have just even gotten even better. And he's focused more on those, you know, those people that will help you level up and like are in the same kind of headspace as you. Mm -hmm. uh, so his relationships, not just, I mean, with me as his wife, but his uh, friendships is even his employees. I mean, they've told me they've noticed a difference. Wow. Ryan is just like everything about him is just, he oozes confidence. Um, he, now when he has great ideas for work and stuff, he's not afraid to like, just even speak about them or even just start implementing them. Mm -hmm. you know which is like huge um because since he's been doing that he's like skyrocketed at work it's 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 insane um like yeah, so it's had we, a financial effect on him also oh, like he, i'm telling you right now huge i mean like crazy financial effect i mean i, I would pay for the project double for him to go back for him to get everything that he has gotten just in this year out of it and who's what he's going to continue to get i would pay double um uh family um you know with our kids like my, my son's three my daughter's two but we've already started implementing stuff that he learned from the project with our kids and you know they're little so obviously we scale it down for them but we already are are implementing stuff that they need to learn you know how to treat people how to speak to people how to act you know, um, how to be confident, you know, my son's little, but he loves sports and like, he gets really down on himself. So we're working on that. Um, and fitness and eh, he could be doing better in fitness, but I guess so could I, um, but he, he tries to make time and he can make more time, but, um, I've been on him that lately. Don't worry. He's going to be making time for fitness. I'm going to make sure of it. I know. I know. He's been telling Talk me to him today about it. We're, he's going to be on it. He has no choice now. So I was like, maybe we should get some done. He needs to go to the gym. But anyways, so, um, yeah, so all those categories, you know, and it's not just about the family too, like the friendships I've been telling you about uh, and, and at work, the relationships at work, um, have just really become really strong. You know, and at work, he is a leader and he speaks like a leader and he isn't, you know, like shy or he's not like a mean, aggressive guy. He's not aggressive, but he's very well spoken. And now he's not afraid to speak, which is awesome. That is freaking awesome. Sometimes man. I, I like want to tell him don't talk, but <laughs> like out of everything you said, 
so many huge like nuggets that just he came back with and all those are huge the one that stands out to me the most out of everything you just said which is to me the most important one is the impact he's having on your kids as like the role model that they need right he's becoming the man that your son is going to one day want to become and the type of man that one day your daughter is going to want to marry like it doesn't get any better than that there's that's that's just freaking priceless right there you couldn't even put a price tag on that and that's that's the one that stands out to me the most of everything you just said. A hundred percent. Like, yeah. I mean, I feel like, you know, we need to create or breed or raise, you know, especially boys, girls too. We need to raise them, you know, better than, you know, some of these kids now because, you know, they need a backbone. This world is, it's, it's a crazy place. So, you know, you need to be able to be tough and, and you know, suck it up and you know learn lessons mm -hmm. and figure it out and i think he's definitely starting that at a young age i love it just suck it up i like it spreading it spreading it off to them too good stuff mm -hmm. and, and you've already kind of answered this but just even to go a little deeper into it it's now a year later so another thing that spouses wives will tell the men is no you're not paying a twelve thousand dollars for just a 75 hour course and you've already kind of alluded to it how it is much more and how it is ongoing how much is it like you're a year, a year later, that's a long time for a course that he came for only four days here to California a year ago. How is that still impacting him literally to this day, if at all, maybe it's not. So uh, how, where is he at right now when it comes to it? So I'll tell you, um, you know, I'm sure people could do the, the project and never, you know, do any, never go back to any of the guys or, you know, the social media stuff that you do or the whatever, like all the private groups that you guys have and everything like that. I'm sure people could probably spend that money and never utilize um, the after, you know, the after education and, and um, camaraderie that you guys have. Uh, and that would be, that would be a real shame if, if someone did that. Um, you know, Ryan's all about too, he learned at the project giving back um, so he was, he was a cadre, you know, last month he was a cadre. So he made it a point to, you know, leave the house, get work off and go, you know, help the project and give back to you guys. You know, he also made a point to go out to Vegas to meet you guys that, that once a year thing you guys do, mm -hmm. you have, if you want to continue to get something out of the project, you have to stay connected. And that's, mostly on you because there's guys that are just going to keep connecting with each other and if you don't jump in you'll be left behind so i think giving back um staying connected um is going to continue to catapult my husband or your husband not yours <laughs> your um, anyone's husband um to leveling up and just being a better person and staying at that level, you know, and like how you said, not dropping down. Mm -hmm. So I think, you know, the staying connected part is huge at continuing to utilize that $12,000 that you spent. Well, you can stretch it out if you stay connected, you know, there's great, I mean, there's great things that you guys put on for these guys and great content that they get and they get a lot out of it. So um, yeah, that's what I think. So now I want to gotta rewind again. So a year ago, he you had a newborn and a two-year-old and he left for a week. Mm -hmm. And then again, like eight months later or however long, he came back as a junior instructor. So that's another week. And yeah. you're now with those two kids again. And then just like last month or a couple of weeks ago, he came to Vegas for three days, which, or two days, which is a, a four day thing. Mm -hmm. And now you have the two kids and you're pregnant too. And you were, he's done these three trips pretty much within a year, really all three of those yeah. trips for the project in a year. Yeah. Actually, and, and you had no problem with that. I believe so much in the project and in you, you instructors, um, that I would never say no, if he asked me to go and give back to you guys or to connect with you guys, I would never say no at this point. It's, it's given way too much to my family. Um, to us and, and the project means a lot to us. You know, I, I feel like I'm, I'm one of the, you know, I feel like you guys are my, my guys. I watch you guys on, you know, the social media and I feel like I know all you guys. Um, so, you know, it's a huge part of our family. Like I said, even our children and I would never tell him not to con continue to give back or continue to connect 
um, to keep leveling himself up and maybe even, uh, you know, helping other people in the project, like, you know, it goes both ways. So, yeah. That is freaking awesome stuff. I mean, you couldn't have said that. I couldn't have said this stuff better. And the funny thing is we just met literally 30 seconds before we started recording this for the first time ever. We've never even spoke and it's just awesome to hear it. And this just continues uh, every time I speak to anyone that knows about the project or is related to someone that's on the project. This just continues to validate why the impact that the project is having to hear it from such such powerful words from you from the other side of the of the picture. It's just freaking awesome. So I want to thank you for joining me on this this episode of you know interviewing the project spouses. And if you or Ryan need anything ever, reach out 24 hours a day. You have a massive army all over the country, all over the world that is a, a support system to you. So just know that you have a full team and a full family here at all times. That's awesome. And thank you guys for all you do too. I know you guys take time away from your family and friends and, and stuff like that. So we appreciate what you guys do too. Awesome. So we'll wrap this up. Christina Megason, you are freaking awesome. I appreciate you taking the time out of your day to come and speak with me about this. And women out there, men out there, if, if you're seeing this and you're watching this, just send me a message or just click, click the link around this video and we can jump on the phone and talk about if this is the right program for your husband. If you're a woman seeing this, you probably know, can find the areas that you think your husband could use improvement in. There's nothing wrong with that. You just heard Christina talking about it just straightforward. She saw what he needed, what he's going to get out of it. So if there's if you, if you need have any questions, let's jump on the phone. You can send this information over to your husband. We'll jump on the phone, see if he's a good fit for the program. We will get him rolling. And I guarantee you 100% that the project will completely transform and change his life in all areas of family, fitness, finances, and faith. Christina, I will talk to you soon. Hello, Ryan. I said, what's up? Thanks for joining me. You are freaking yeah. awesome and no excuses. Thank you.